So I'm in a bit of a pickle. Uh, I'm about to turn this platter and I chose this beautiful piece of uh, red stringy bark and you might be wondering why does it already have a recess and I must have been an absolute muppet when I was turning this, roughing it out, but it's also got some water stains on there, it's got a bit of mould over here or something, it's got a crack just here so we're going to have to be careful of that, just make sure it doesn't go any deeper than, than that, we'll get away with that. It's got some weird stuff growing on it just here too which is quite funky, but uh, I think we'll be able to get away with it. How I'm going to remount this, this is the tricky bit, is I'm going to mount it back on the uh, Vic, Mo Vic Mark chuck jaws there and then form a tenon on the face of the platter and then we'll flip it around and then finish the base till completion. But yes, it's going to be a little bit tricky because this is going to be warped on the inside here so we're just going to have to take our time but let's not waste time and get stuck into it. I'm just going to push into that there. My little, my little finger's going to push into there. But anyway. It's actually going really well for those that are interested. It, I've got a fair bit of movement back into it now. I still can't, still can't form a fist, but hey, it's it's uh, reattached and we're we're off to the races, so to say. Now, I heard a few people didn't. Uh, some people liked it and some people didn't like the uh, POV view. So this view here, looking down at what I'm doing. Uh, but I quite liked filming it this way. It made my process a lot easier. So yeah, I'm gonna true this face up. Nineteen millimeter bowl gouge, woodcut tools, fifty-five degree bevel with the heel removed on that big guy there. Look at that already good to go. Let's mark up this tenon. Feels weird doing it this way, but we've got no other no other choice. Bring this up to center height. Where do we want to go? One inch skew. That will do us. Get this off. Flip around. Get it out a bit. I did a bit bloody big there, didn't I? Hey, jeez, check out the size of the tenon. That's a bit crap, Kez. Tighten him up. Not going to go anywhere there. Back to the uh, 19 mil. All the work's already done for me, eh? Hey? through that area. Little pull cut. Right. See that bit there? That's that's the that's when it's warped out of shape, but you can this is oh this is gonna be beautiful. Have a look at this. That's gonna be nice. Bit of torn grain there on the end grain there, but not to worry. Right out. A nice sharp 16 mil. Just be careful when you come up to that edge there, that when that's coming down, it just doesn't catch that, that wing on that side and just pull you in. Feel a bit of a bit of a ripple there. I'm pretty much gonna leave it the same, same shape, but I'll bring, bring this guy down.
nice. Look at this little, little bit of a line there. Let's get rid of that. Handle down real low. Oop. What happened there is my tip of the gouge. Just that inside little shoulder. Right. Wunderbar. Now we'll tidy up this. It's got a bit of an OG there. And I really like turning OGs. I just don't like saying that, uh, but I'm just gonna get this little. Now this is, a, I don't normally turn platters like this. Nice. Back to the 16mm, uh, we'll tidy up this base here. Make sure we're running it center. Yep. Gonna come in there, move that foot. So I'm gonna come across. Yeah, that looks there. Gee, it's hard stuff, eh? Right, eh? Oh. The camera's going everywhere. When, I, when I'm using this guy, I'm, I'm looking over here because if I get my head in there, you won't be able to see. And I get my skew chisel, lay it flat on the tool rest. Raise it up first, make sure we're cutting on, on the center. And we'll just get rid of all of that. That's just dust there, but it's a nice clean cut on the base there. See that over there? I'll, I'll, do, it. I'll do a little bit more. See that? That's what I'm watching over there. So I'm just going to tidy this bit up here on the base, um, but I just wanted to mention um, one thing is where I learnt how to turn platters, and this might help you out as well, is just study professional wood turners. Um, I, I watch Glenn Lucas, uh, Mike Mahoney, there's a lot of information out there online as well, but uh, they, they also have DVDs that you can download and purchase. I'm not sponsored by those two guys, I'm just saying, they are a wealth of knowledge. They've been doing it for as long as I've been alive and they're just, they're, they're the go-to sort of guys when it comes to turning platters. So I highly recommend watching them. Um, so that's where I learned a lot of my skills um, as well as my father-in-law. So just wanted to tell you that because I believe it's really important to have someone to have someone that you can study and, and you can sort of look up to and ask them questions. Right, so instead of showing you the whole sanding process, I just want to run through some really important stuff of what I've picked up along the way. I don't want to insult your intelligence, but how I use the drill sander is I start, now all depending on your finish with your tools, on the finished, on the piece that you're turning, uh, all depends on where you start with your sanding paper. I started at 120 grit and then went 180, 240. You never wanna move more than 50% uh, through the grits. So if you finish off the tools or, you know, um, it wasn't the best or something like that, you might have to start at 80 grit, but don't be ashamed. Just start where you need to, but then move through 50% of those grits until you, well, until I get up to 240, and then I'll show you in a sec what I do. So I use the drill, I have the platter running the opposite way to the drill. So uh, using the top edge of the drill, I work it across, making sure I don't roll over the edges so you can still see that nice crisp little little detail in there, the crisp, 
edge in there for the uh, recess around the side all looks really nice and clean so and then I work it along the side I have my dust collection unit right there and my in-room filter running and I'm wearing my respirator which I went and put on after so that's how I sand and then I get up to 240 grit and then I'll show you that now I come over and I start my little uh, my old army uh, burner to heat up my branding iron when that's going, whilst the piece is running and I make some little circles there, I have, and then I stop the lathe and then I run the platter or whatever I'm turning so the grain lines are running across like a notepad. So I then use those lines to brand. It helps me center up the branding iron and then later on I can use the uh, lines down the bottom here for signing and that acts like a like a notepad line. I picked up on the uh, notepad lines off um, Glenn Lucas, he, that's how he does it and it's actually a really really cool way of keeping your uh, you know your date and your signature or name in line it looks yeah it's a lot easier way of doing it instead of trying to rule down and then make a line. So that's that's what happens at that stage and I'll show you in a sec. Um, there's two things I want to show you just here, but um, this is a really clever little way of checking your thickness. So you're always, when you turn platters, this is over exaggerated and that's way too much. You just want to try and keep your chuck jaws in a perfect circle. And you can see the way that's opened up way too much, but you just want to be able to have it there so you can fit your chuck or fit your um, calipers in between and then get it around to the recess to check. So that's another little thing. So that's that and then this here, I put this on before I started sanding because I've had enough things going pear shaped at the lathe. Um, the other week I had a bowl, a bowl, hold on, I had a bowl explode, um, smashed up into my arm and uh, all this was really badly bruised so I'm just taking all the precautions at the moment or well, you know just forming some really good practices back into, into my turning. So this here will stop your chuck from coming off the lathe. So they come on uh, VL240s, they'll be on the back here um, on the hand wheel, but that there, you put it on, there's two Allen key um, screws there, you put it on and that'll stop your chuck from winding itself off when you're spinning in reverse when sanding. Over here is I'm all prepared for wet sanding. And what I'm going to use, because I've stopped at 240 grit, I use a wet and dry sandpaper. I've got 320 grit sandpaper here, and I fold it up so none of it is touching when I'm using it. And I highly suggest folding it up because your fingers will, will burn when you're running it across trying to build up that slurry. I've got two pieces of, uh, of a towel here, just make sure it's not the mother-in-law's. Soak it in, in some uh, whatever you choose to use. At the moment, I'm going to use a, uh, this is Organ Oil, an Australian product, high speed finishing, uh, uh, high speed finishing natural oil for wood turners. It is beautiful stuff. Just wait till we put this on, you will be blown away. Uh, it's such a simple thing and, and simple way how to use it. And I keep it on this little tray just here. I'll bring that over here. And now we are ready. Oops. We are ready to brand our piece. Come over, that's nice and hot there. I picked this up off Etsy. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but uh, it's a really cool little branding iron. I'll show you exactly. Oop, I just knocked one of the cameras. So grain lines are running across. I'll add up with one of the circles. I've made one just a bit too big, so I'll just go to the center of it. Press it in there down and then up, down and then up and then across. And now you might be thinking I need to remove those lines. Just wait and see. So I want to lather, lather it right up with oil. Have a look at this. Now let the oil sit on there for about 10-15 minutes and now turn the lathe speed right down, chuck it in reverse, helmet on.
get a now get your cloth fold it over pinch method buff that in generate some heat that's looking really nice take this off here take it off our other <laughs> mounting point come around I might have to wind it in because I had a massive pen in there Oop, I've got a massive spot on the back too now when you wind it up creating tension within that recess just make sure you don't overdo it and crack oops, and, cr and crack it but that there is looking really nice so this is sort of taking the shape of a plate a household plate if you can picture that let's start getting it all shaped up with the 19 millimeter uh, bowl gouge make sure we're cutting on center too high this crack here might give us some grief uh, when we're getting into it but we will uh, see how we go let's check the thickness here and around the back make sure i've taped up the end of mine so it doesn't scratch it got a bit of love there probably about what's that about 10 mil 10 mil there so it's actually working out really well because i'll just have to take that off and then thin it down a little bit more but we'll concentrate on forming up the outside first shield down see how it's running oh it's running really nicely so I'm just going to do a pull cut. Sort of roll, rolling that edge around. Make sure it's not sharp. How are we looking with that crack, eh? What have we got there? Give me a little dental tool here. Have a look what's going on. I don't think I have any more black filler anyway. Hmm. Let's fix that up right now. Glues, glues, glues. This one, accelerator. I don't have any coffee beans. And if we got some dust, here we go. Let's get some of this dust. Some dust in there. Keep some of it, Kez. Fill it up. Oh, don't tell me. I'm gonna have to come back and sand it, but that's okay. I'd rather do it all now. Right. Sweet. 16 millimeter bar gouge. See that? See that there? Clean cut. <laughs> I'm just pulling that in with my hand, the tool's down by my hip. Right. 
Gonna do a nice little sort of tidy up cut here. See all those little shavings coming off? Just gonna take half of that. Check that. Sounded a little bit thin, didn't it? No, we're off. Look at it, it's so bloody hard. Let's see if you can see that what I'm saying. Got a little bit to play there. We'll just take it down. We'll finish this off. I'm just looking at it here. I think what we might do is, I want to show you another way. I, I, I like finishing pieces off with gouges, but what I want to show you is maybe a scraper. So let's let's get a scraper. And this is just a homemade sort of French curved scraper that I've made up. And what we'll do is just lightly scrape any little lumps and bumps across it. Get rid of all this crap here, hold on. We'll just lightly scrape across the face of that. Bit low. I don't scrape the whole surface because I don't want to ruin what I've done with my with my gouge. Got a little bit of a lump there. Feel all that nice little shavings, and that is feeling really nice. One more, just in that little little culvert. Oh. Beautiful. One small thing I wanted to show you, it's a little tip whilst the oil's settling in. I mean, look at that, look how gorgeous. That's, that is just a stunning timber. That really tricky to turn, it's got a lot of minerals and that in it. Dulls your tools super fast. But when you are sanding, you have your sandpaper on, you're going and sanding and you might see that it clogs up. All you need to do is get this guy here and then this is a uh, rubber cleaning stick. Just type in rubber cleaning stick into wherever you get your wood turning supplies from or woodworking supplies. I put the drill around my waist like so and then I hold it against me upside down so I've got it resting against, against my tummy. Very firm tummy. Anyway, turn it on and then run it across the front and that'll clean the surface of your sandpaper. So you might think it's dirty but really it's uh, just, just needs a quick clean. Put that under there, and now that oil's been sitting on there. We'll just uh, we'll get this off. So lathe down low, 320 grit still. See that's what we're looking. See that stuff there? That's what you want. It's like a paste when you're wet sanding. That's the idea. That's what you're chasing. Lathe down low, in reverse and then bring up the speed just a little bit because you don't want to have it flat, flat out because when you go to start wet sanding it'll spray all over your shield and all over your clothes but you know, your partner will love you. You just don't want to get oil in your eyes and that too. So remember we went around the back here to get that, get that crack. Just keep working that sandpaper over the surface bring up the speed. I hold my right or my left hand over my wrist there like so and just run it over it.
that there is just a beautiful simple plate design nice wide rim plenty of room in there for your food really nice broad foot no marks from the uh, from the chuck jaws on the inside there little logo little crack there but I'm not concerned about it I'll be putting another two coats of oil on this over the next um, couple of days but that there is a uh, Queensland red stringy bark platter very beautiful timber to work with extremely hard thank you so much for watching